This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be yet another Yu-Gi-Oh! World Chalice combo tutorial video, or rather one of the more simplified ones, and this one is also a combo that I have to redo because of the new format taking effect. With the banning of Digusto Emerald, this combo has changed, and unfortunately, unlike a lot of the other combos that were able to be changed in a way that still preserved the amount of plussing and the amount of drawing that you'd be able to, you know, yield out of those combos, the Lee Transmodify combo is actually one of the very few combos in the deck's uh, you know, repertoire that actually got hindered and the outcome changed for the worse, essentially from the ban list banning Digesto Emerald, because previously, you'd be able to draw four cards and then draw three off Ningirsu and be at like a plus six or plus seven, somewhere in that range. But now, off of Lee Transmodify alone, you can only generate a plus three at maximum without adding other cards to your hand for uh, for the combo to feed off of, essentially, because you will only be able to draw two cards off Ningirsu unless you start adding other cards and your ending field will be, you know, have two additional cards in your hand that you just drew off Ningirsu, and then you'll end with an Orum, a Lee, and an Ningirsu. And so, it's a far cry from the previous combo, which was like a plus five to plus seven, somewhere in that range, depending on how you started it. But, so it's a combo that I definitely needed to show you guys a revision of, because I've been having people contact me about this combo specifically, because they're like, is there any way to still draw three cards with these cards, and is Transmodify still worth running? To that merit, I believe yes. I believe you should definitely still be running Transmodify, because it gives you better access into Venus, which is such an amazing combo enabler for this deck in general. Um, while it is a very high risk card because it is very much a key target to get Ash Blossomed for like a plus one for your opponent, um, it's still something that I think is uh, is perfectly fine to run because it's a high risk, high reward type card because it turns the hands where your normal summoning Lee is your first action into hands that are really good and only Transmodify and Brilliant Fusion really do that. But anyway, so this combo is basically Lee plus Transmodify, and I'm going to show you how it operates without any additional monsters, and then I'll show you how it operates, or how it changes with the additional monsters. So you normal summon Lee, and you're going to use Lee's effect to add World Legacy World Chalice to your hand if it is not already there. Then you're going to activate the Transmodify on the Lee, tributing it to summon your Agent of Creation Venus to an appropriate zone. Uh, you just want it as far away as possible from where you're going to be doing your Link Summoning. I'm right-handed. I'm using the right-hand zone, so I'm putting Lee. Uh, so I'm putting Venus in the farthest left-hand zone. Uh, if you were, you know, operating out of the left zone, just reverse every card placement that I show you. But then you'll activate the Venus's effect, summoning the three Mystical Shine Balls from your deck, paying 1,500 life, and then you will link with one of the Shine Balls into your Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. And then from here, you're going to gain the additional Normal Summon the Imduk gives you to tribute one of your Shine Balls for the World Legacy World Chalice out of your hand. Then you're going to link with Imduk in the World Legacy World Chalice into Orum, the World Chalice Blade Master. And then at this point, the World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger summoning two World Chalice monsters out of your deck. You'll summon Chosen by the World Chalice and a World Chalice Guard Dragon. So instead of being able to summon two Beckons and go into like Digesto Emerald and then immediately start fueling these Shine Balls back and gaining three additional resources, you're capped at these additional two. Technically, additional like it's a technically it's an additional like resource because of this, but it's still nowhere near as good as Digesto Emerald in this area would be because you'd link into Emduk here, you'd make Emerald, you'd shuffle back the three Shine Balls, and so then the Emerald is a resource. You drew a card off of it, and then you get three more resources, so you get four resources out of that. Whereas at max, you get out of this is three, and that's what makes up that uh, that Ningirsu draw going away. But so from here, you're gonna link with the World Chalice Guard Dragon and the last Shine Ball and open up the center zone for the Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, to go there. And then from here, you're going to link with the Venus and the Chosen by the World Chalice into your Proxy Dragon in either of the zones that the Eeb points to. And then from here, you're going to activate the World Chalice Guard Dragon's Graveyard Effect, banishing it to bring back either the Chosen or one of the Shine Balls. It literally doesn't matter. And then you'll link with it into an Imduk or a Link Spider, your choice. It depends on what cards are in your hand, which I will go into a little bit later. And then you're going to link with these two cards into your Ningirsu to the right of Eeb, being uh, pointing at the Orum and the uh, and the Eeb itself. And so then you will use Ningirsu's effect to draw two cards. So it is still powerful. It is still a plus three, which is you know respectable in its own right. Um, 
But ultimately, by itself, as a two-card combo, this combo used to be a lot stronger with the presence of Digesto Emerald. And so this is one of the combos that did get worse in terms of the ban list hitting it. A few of the other, a bunch of the other combos actually, not even just a few of them, like a bunch of the other combos were able to be reworked in some capacity because you were operating with so many extra cards or things like Exodius picked up the slack or things like Gofu or Rabbit were like just different cards that could be swapped in for the combo to still yield the same sort of result. This is one of the only combos that actually got very much worse from the uh, from the banning of Emerald uh, in terms of like just the raw advantage you yield from it. However, there is a silver lining in that because this is only a two card combo, you can have a third card in your hand that is highly variable that turns this into a draw three. If the other if one of the other three cards in your hand, if any of them are any monster. It could be a World Chalice monster, in which case you have to take no extra steps. If it is a World Chalice monster, then the Imduk is just something that triggers and you summon the World Chalice monster into this zone. So it could be something like, uh, let me find one real quick. Poorly prepared Flare X. Um, you, if you had a World Chalice monster in your hand and your additional three cards, you could just summon it here off the Imduk and then draw your three cards off Ningirsu. However, if it is any other card in your hand, like say like a Duplicate Venus or like a Rescue Rabbit, or even if it's something like Kyoto Waterfront in your hand before you summon Ngirsu, you can play Kyoto, and you'll get three counters on it, you can add a Kaiju, and then all you do is you discard that monster for Lee before you summon Ngirsu, so you'll just discard it and add uh, Lee to your hand, and because Lee is unused if you haven't used Brilliant Fusion to get access to your Lee this turn, and so then you'd just be able to special summon it and draw three cards, so it would rotate any monster in your hand out for the third draw. Now, it doesn't change the advantage yield that you get, with the sole exception being Kyoto Waterfront, because Kyoto will be adding a monster to your hand, which is a plus one. The plus one would be generated off Kyoto, though, not the not the, uh, not the the actual like, Ningirsu play, uh, because you'd just be rotating a card out, and you'd be dedicating an additional card into the combo, and still just drawing three cards. But it is something worth noting. The Transmodify play still can yield you a three-card draw, but it just requires you to have another monster in your hands to do so, whether it's a World Chalice monster or just any monster to be discarded off of Lee. Um, that's just the main thing that needs to be discussed here. Now, you can start this combo with Brilliant Fusion Transmodify as well uh, by activating Brilliant Fusion as your very first card, sending, Gar uh, sending Garnet and Lee to Grave, and then using Lee to send the Seraph Knight from your field to Grave to add it to hand, then normal summoning it. Um, and then, you know, Transmodifying your combo is still identical. But from that point onward, Lee has used its graveyard effect to add itself back to your hand. So in that instance, it does require you to have specifically another World Chalice monster in your hand if you're going to try and trigger the Imduk's grave effect when you're summoning Ningirsu to draw your third card rather than just getting two. So it's things to, it's things to note and things to work around. Uh, there are obviously other third cards that you can put into the combo that would make it highly, like, much bigger of a ceiling, like having Gofu plus Lee plus Transmod modify or having like exodius i literally just like started choking on my own tongue there that was odd <laughs> oh well um but so like yeah there's plenty of other things that you can have access to but literally any monster in your deck uh before the summon of the ningirsu or anything that adds a monster like kyoto waterfront if you're playing the kaiju build or whatever allows you the potential to add lee back to your hand and still generate three draws off your ningirsu so it's definitely something worth discussing but it's not something that's a big and drastic change to the combo that warrants me rewinding the entire board and doing it again, especially considering that the step of adding Lee to your hand is literally the last step before you summon in Girsu, so it's very much the last step of the combo, so there's no reason to redo the entire combo sequence and just waste your time other than just discussing it and telling you guys what's uh, going on. But still, Lee plus Transmodify by itself is still a plus three overall, which is kind of respectable. It does make it a bit harder to build your board afterwards if you didn't have any extenders until you drew those two cards. Uh, but if you did have the other card in your hand to utilize to add uh, Lee back, or if you had another World Chalice monster in your hand, it obviously gets a bit easier because you're drawing three cards, cycling out three new combo pieces, and you have just more uh, combo enabling cards on the board to allow that to be possible as well because you have an additional monster on the board in the form of the Lee being summoned back. There's a bunch of different factors that go into play. 
and so I don't think I need to waste much more of your time discussing them with you. I'm pretty sure you guys should get it by now if you've been watching your way through my World Chalice combo tutorials and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave it at that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more World Chalice videos or if you want to see more combo tutorials in general. Would love to know your opinions in the comments, as I've already said as well. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I'd love to welcome you on board. And links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you enjoy the content I create and want to help support my ability to continue creating content in the scope that I've been doing so recently, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support, as well as the different reward tiers get you different access into rewards back for yourself as well, like entry into monthly raffle giveaways for a box of Yu-Gi-Oh! product or something comparable in price or size or access into my private Discord server, whichever ones you prefer to pursue. Definitely go check out the reward tiers if any of that is of interest to you. But special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a lot more than you will ever understand or ever know in this endeavor that I'm trying to do, and you have my eternal gratitude as I always say. But other than that, thanks for watching. As I've already said, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, Take care. I'll see you in the next video. It sucks that this combo got a little bit worse, but at least we can try and work through it with some additional cards that we get in the future, maybe. But take care, guys.